Welcome to the 185th episode of News Dump, where we run through the hottest topics in the Lewis County news scene and discuss. I'm local man Aaron Vantile, joined by Chronicle Executive Editor Eric Schwartz and photojournalist Cody Christian. And we're joined in spirit by sponsor Summit Funding, Shayla's Outfitters, and The Roof Doctor for now, although we have a special guest joining us in a few minutes. Oh, we're going to play like we didn't just record it? And uh, yeah, we're going to it's it a big surprise. Ooh, <laughs> it's uh, Thurston County Sheriff Derek Sanders is on. And our first segment is actually going to be faster because he stayed uh, longer than we had expected. Not that it was unwelcome by any means. He was great. You just won't allow the podcast to be a thick boy this week? It is going to be quite the thick boy. Not allowed to go over an hour, ever. We can go over an hour. There's no time limit. It's the internet. You can, this podcast can be 24 hours. Any other preambles before we jump into the brief set of news items? No, let's do it. I will be uh, developing a line of boat st- spike strips and going into business with that sometime soon. That's a good idea. So Anything stay tuned else? For that. Any, any other... Uh, Careers you want to get into that he mentioned maybe should be legal? <laughs> nope. That's a little... little Cody extra. becoming a <laughs> uh, gentleman of the night. <laughs> Carpooling. Cody Bigelow. The uh, world's oldest profession. <laughs> News item. First up. <laughs> Glenoma couple files $13 million lawsuit against the PUD, alleging new meters could be, quote, Trojan horse for a worldwide agenda. William and Allison, Alice Bud are asking for an immediate injunction against the installation of future meters in Lewis County, quotes, until the LCPUD can prove that they are safe. These meters, which PUD manager David Plotz has discussed at length, produce small amounts of radiation. These AMI meters only transmit for one and a half seconds every two to four hours. A cordless phone generates 1,000 times more radio frequency, while cell phones generate 10,000 times more exposure to radio frequency. That's just according to you. This was in the story, sir. Yeah, how's, how's that worldwide agenda for you? <laughs> the bud said the option to turn off the radio transceiver did not resolve the conflict. They also declined an offer to disconnect from the power grid. They said the $25... I like that, that was offered. <laughs> they said the $25 monthly fee to manually read the meters equates to extortion. And their complaint states, quote, the implementation of such a smart grid would allow the implementation of a social credit system that is already functioning in communist China to the detriment of the freedom of the Chinese people living there. I don't know about you guys, but I'm, I'm, I'm kinda, convinced. I'm kind of struggling to connect the dots here. Uh, I mean, it's, it's, Cody, there was a lot of dot connecting that went into this complaint, clearly. <laughs> uh, yeah, I... Yeah, I don't really have much to say on it. I'm I'm drowning in a sea of letters that I don't think I can run. That is like <laughs> blaming these these meters for I mean every possible ailment you could possibly come up with. Your flood legs, um, smart meters. I don't know. I, I the PUD has tried everything. They've held they held three community meetings just on the smart meters. They've off like cut back the fee for you know what it would cost mm-hmm. for someone to come out and check it. Um, but the people who believe these things are dangerous really truly believe it, and they have done their research, Aaron. <laughs> they certainly have. Uh, Mitchell got, he wrote this story. He got a bunch of emails over the weekend with, quote, links he doesn't feel comfortable clicking on. <laughs> uh, and I will say that the the plaintiffs in this case are not happy about this situation uh, or our coverage of it. I got a, I got a very terse email from... <laughs> From, uh, from Mrs. Bud, I believe. How is she sending an email? Won't the radiation uh, just knock her dead? Yeah, I know, but... I thought they were uh, off the grid now. I don't know, they were unhappy with the coverage, so I want to note that. They thought we should have reached out to them directly. Mm, a lot of the times with lawsuits, we're just going to go off of your lawsuit, um, especially when the PUD won't talk, or else it just becomes a piling on with no findings of fact. So. Yeah, fair. But, um, yeah, I figured you'd have fun with this, and I didn't tell you about it because I wanted you to discover it in the wild. I did. And, like, have the thrill... Uh, I don't think they're going to win the lawsuit. But what's uh, I, just the option where they're like, well, we can turn the transceivers off. Not good enough. <laughs> like, well, we can just take you off the power grid completely. No. What was it? What was the option that was twenty five dollars a month? Uh, you got to pay that to get them to come out and manually check the meter because the new uh, meters send back like uh, the, the power usage, which is the privacy concern for them, I guess. But um, is that we more can already of a privacy concern than somebody just traipsing across your property to knock on the side of your house with a stick or whatever? How would they check the meters? Yeah. I don't know how electricity I works. I don't think they knock on your house with a stick. <laughs> They've uh, maybe <laughs> they just take a magnet, and if it sticks to your house and your bill goes up, I don't know how magnets <laughs> work either. 
Anyway, so that's that's. I'm sh- surely there won't be a hilarious resolution to this story coming soon. Mm-mm. Stay tuned. We might have a follow up. Yeah. All right. Next item: Centralia City Council approves turfing contract for Boris Park Fields. Parks director applying for more grants for new field lighting. Uh, I was just light on items. <laughs> so you just threw that one in there? Yeah, I, I'm glad they're getting turf over there. It's going to be cool. Uh, Wheeler Field being turf. Do you like that idea as a longtime sports guy? I'm kind of torn on it. Like, I like that Wheeler's so natural and so, like, it's like it's a very historic field. You know? It has it's an ambiance. When you walk in, it feels like, yeah, it feels like America's pastime. Yeah, uh, it does. Exactly. Um, I think it should stay grass, personally. I but. like. I would love to see it stay grass, and the fact that we've got a turf field over at Centralia College, just like yeah. a mile away, is like kind of a reason for it. But my reasons for wanting it to stay grass are purely aesthetic, like just for the yeah, vibe. same. But like, I I think uh, that goes hand in hand with that. Is like it has to be well maintained mm-hmm. to stay grass and like stay pristine and nice. And to be clear, be I believe achieved. the ship has sailed, and we're getting turf. Yeah, so. yeah, and I can yeah, imagine like sure. the maintenance on Wheeler Field to keep it playable through the season is got to be like prohibitively high. Yeah. What about the vast difference in uh, spectator experience for the Centralia College baseball fields compared compared to Wheeler? Wheeler, you're just like right up on top of it. There's not a bad seat in that place. In my no, opinion. Wheeler's great. It's it always cracked me up covering baseball back in the day that Centralia and Shalis had these very like unique, cool stadiums. Shalis is just like crammed into the only spot they could fit it on the school grounds, basically. But it was all like volunteer built, very nice. Wheeler Field obviously is great, and then you go to see a game in like. Tom water and it's just like two sets of bleachers and a field deal like bleachers in, and some like, gravel yeah yeah like next to the football field there's no yeah. like you can see the freeway right it's just not the same mm. shots fired at Tom water I mean look that Tom water has a lot of very nice facilities just it's their pretty baseball field was not uh, back then they might have improved it since then I don't know maybe their coach has a, a nice source of funding <laughs> or something God, Actual four. in-ground <laughs> dugouts are really rare too for like local baseball fields. Yeah, that's Wheeler Fields Wheeler dugouts. Has. They're like there's a pisser in one of them. Yeah, that's awesome. That's Only cool. one of them. Oh, the home team. Home team. Yeah. Yeah, that makes sense. Mm-hmm. They had a, they had one otherwise. in the dugout in Efredo last year at the state championships. Did you pee in it? I did not. No. Coward. Yeah. It's the best football <laughs> stadium in uh, in our coverage area. Ooh. <laughs> uh, on Alaska. Are you kidding me? No conditions. Big I, yellow. <laughs> just for like. No, could it just be your best one? Best one. Best experience. I mean, my favorite with the old one in Atna was uh, yeah, up on the uh, hill. On the hill was pretty non-existent sick. existent one. Yeah, it's not there not anymore. anymore no. The bleachers were tiny and the like the field was sloped. So if you stood in one end zone, you couldn't see the other end zone. Uh, we had that at Forks, except for the slope cool. was down the center of the field. So if you're on the <laughs> sideline, you could see half of like the torsos and helmets of the opposing team. Yeah. And you had to run up the hill to get to the center of the field. Does this count? Since we cover PWV for sports, does it, can we use Crockstead Field? Crockstead Field's cool too. The vibes are pretty immaculate there. Yeah, I like a good like old wooden bleachers and, and the like, trees on the all around on the outside. Just and also there's people in the house next to the stadium that will just like walk through the trees with like a drink. Yeah, Very cool. It's pretty sweet. Um, but as far as like the biggest night, we don't have like a super nice football. Tum water. I mean, well, I mean, if you count tum water, yeah. and like I don't like tum water that much. Jeez. I'm just like, it's fine. It's big. It just feels impersonal. Mm-hmm. Oh, I thought you just meant Tumwater. You dislike Tumwater. I'm trying to think of my favorite. I, well, just my favorite football place field to play not was. my favorite. You gave them hardly any sports coverage when you were sports editor. <laughs> if only something had changed since then, yeah. <laughs> um, all right, next item. Lewis County Animal Shelter to lower adoption fee for adult dogs for a week. 75% off all dogs. Get your dogs Just here. adult dogs. You still got to pay premium for puppy. Starting Tuesday. That's today. Tomorrow. The adoption fee dropped from $210 to $50. In a news release, Animal Shelter Manager Joseph Henderson said the shelter is operating at capacity and needs additional space to accept new dogs. The adoptable dogs currently at the shelter include an Anatolian shepherd named Houdini, a pit bull mix named Connor, and a bloodhound mix named Harvey, among others. Connor's the best name for a dog. Very good dog name. If you adopt <laughs> adopt a dog this week, send us a picture at chroniclenewsnub at gmail.com, and that'll be our next cover art. Yes, or it could be uh, maybe another adoptable adoptable dog from another rescue or shelter. Uh, This story never comes without controversy because the uh, rescues in the surrounding area are not pleased with uh, 
the operations at the Lewis County Animal Shelter. I'll point out on Alaska Farm Sanctuary posted as 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 yours truly was just posting dog photos after dog photos after dog photos from the shelter. Uh, you are going to hear me say that the Lewis County Animal Shelter is not functioning probably a million times. What is happening in Lewis County is not normal. The shelter is paid for on tax dollars uh, to intake lost, found, surrendered animals. Anyone that has called the shelter has likely been turned away. Um, so I have collected some other rescue photos of dogs that I'm going to be sharing over the next week. I meant to do it this weekend, but didn't get to it. And then in this post, on Alaska Farm Sanctuary was encouraging people to adopt their dogs from the Centralia Police Department. Uh, Stacy Denham was in like five videos last I week with dogs. <laughs> yeah, I thought that was cool. I think that's I a very chiefly thing to do. Yeah, uh, you know, he's on his way out. He can just yeah, like, ah, what am I doing at work today? You know, I just take my picture with these dogs. Yeah, you talked about it. it's a real problem. You can't take your dogs to the shelter anymore, so they've had to start their own de facto shelter. Yeah. So sounds like there are plenty of dogs out there. Maybe the Lewis County Jail should adopt the same strategy and do a 75% off all bail <laughs> next week. <laughs> really get that number down where they want it to be. Uh, with that, we're going to take a quick break, and then we'll be back with Derek Sanders. Hi, this is Jeff and Julie from Fairway Lanes. Jeff and I met Jacek of Summit Funding at our bowling center. So when we fell in love with this community and it was time to relocate, we knew we would be calling Summit Funding. They understand that everyone has a unique situation when buying a home. He had already helped two of our employees get into their own homes. The Summit Funding team exceeded our expectations. It was a seamless experience with great communication from his whole team. Thank you to Summit Funding for making our buying experience special and memorable. All right, we're joined now. we got a very special guest. We don't have a ton of guests on. We've been doing more of that this year, but Thurston County Sheriff Derek Sanders is here. Derek, how's it going? Good. Thanks for having me. Uh, what, uh, what made you say yes to the invitation to do this podcast? Oh, well, you know, the Chronicle does a pretty good job of representing South Thurston County, so I figured pretty I'd good. come out here and... Pretty good, he says. Yeah, pretty good. I'd, I'd, well, you I'd do say. a pretty good job as sheriff. <laughs> <laughs> Just joking. Just joking. Uh, did you ask Wayne about us at all? No. Okay. No, I didn't. I, I'm pretty close with Wayne, but no, I didn't. I didn't chat. Is, with him. Does Wayne ever talk about us? No, <laughs> no. I know that's probably disappointing. You're probably like, come on, man, tell me that Wayne talks about me all the time. I, yeah, you know, he, <laughs> you know, he always when he wants something, he's our best friend. But it's true. <laughs> Oregon Trail Days is coming up, know. so we'll hear oh, from him. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. You definitely will then. <laughs> so you have been uh, in a, it's, it's in office, right? A holding mm -hmm. office yep. in your current position as Thurston County Sheriff for, you were telling us just before we got started, about 16 months, yeah. 17? Yeah, 16, 17 months now. All right. The most pressing question, obviously, your favorite cop movie. Oh, my gosh. I mean, end of watch as far as like a serious cop movie. I don't think you can be end of watch. Okay. All right. You're taking a serious tone with it. That's good. Yeah. Uh, the I was going to say the correct answer is Die Hard. But. <laughs> if we're that's, going not so serious, I mean, it's Bad Boys. Yeah, that's uh, Okay, fair. yeah, that's, that's, fair a, that's a deep yeah. gut. All right. Yeah. Um, Gee, there's another one coming. Yeah, I, it it's looks terrible. It's the new Fast and Furious. Yeah, it's, I love well, it. it's not It's not carried away. <laughs> um, so first up, uh, you know, what was the biggest surprise for you when you took office as sheriff when you took over? Um, you know, I think you, you run for office, and, like, for me, I just... I guess it's tough because I look at it and I'm like, man, I was just so like, always just like, why can't we do it this way? Mm -hmm. You know, what's mm -hmm. actually stopping us? Yeah. Um, and then as a deputy, I was always asking that question like, hey, this is way better. Let's do it this way. Well, we can't. Why not? Because we've always done it this way. And uh, I think the biggest surprise, right, you know, you go into the campaign mode and of course, when you're, when you're running to keep your spot, you're going to tell everyone why they can't do something they want to do. Yeah. Uh, the most surprising thing to me has been just how much of this we certainly can do. We we can disclose more stuff on social media. We can be more transparent. Mm -hmm. um, we can use vacancy savings to reinvest it back into our employees and try to boost retention. I mean, all the things that I campaigned on that, you know, oh, we can't do that. You can't yeah. do that. Uh, they've all come true. So mm -hmm. <laughs> I think that's been the biggest surprise for me is really just seeing um, some of those things play out and actually play out kind of successfully. How steep was the learning curve? Because if I remember correctly, you did not get a whole lot of input from your predecessor when you took office, right? It was kind of like, here's the keys. Correct. Yeah. yeah. I would actually say the the transition was pretty smooth because I kept his chief of finance, so I didn't have to do any kind of transition for money, which is maybe the most complicated 
part of this whole thing. So we kept a lot of institutional knowledge there. And then all three of my bureau chiefs um, were lieutenants in their bureaus. Uh, and then my um, executive aide used to be a legal assistant and worked almost every position in the front office. So uh, my team made it a much, much more seamless transition than I think it would have been had I brought in exterior uh, candidates for those positions. Mm-hmm. So the the transition, you know, January 1, I felt like we hit the door running pretty fast. Yeah. Uh, you talked about things that you'd previously heard that, you know, you can't change that or that's just the way it is. Was the staff um, open to those changes you made and to doing things differently? No. Okay. And mostly, I think, just a distrust yeah. of management of any kind. Mm-hmm. Um, I'll, I'll tell you, I mean, like seven months into really good faith negotiations with our union outside of a contract. I mean, I'm just, I'm trying to get them stuff and get things done. It was still like, why are you doing this? Yeah. Like, we don't trust Suspicious. why you're doing this. Like, why are you paying us more? Why are you trying to get us more days? Why are you doing this? You know, why are you authorizing this? And it's like, because I want, like, if I can take care of you guys, I think I can yeah. recruit based on that. And it's like, hmm. <laughs> and they like just totally didn't trust me um, when it came to that. But I think over time, it started to kind of, I mean, you know. When are you going to flip the switch on the master plan? I don't know yet. I'm <laughs> thinking <laughs> year, year, year second three. Second term? Yeah, <laughs> year three. <laughs> All right. Uh, we checked in with you for a one-year story back in January, and you said the crime rate is still out of control and our staffing is still a mess. Um, any updates on staffing in the Gotham-like state of Thurston County? <laughs> yeah. Um, well, I've been working with the county commissioners to try and find some more creative ways uh, because like I've said from the beginning, you know, my, my job here as the sheriff is to find people to come do more work for less money because they love it. Yeah. Um, and everyone wants that candidate. So good luck finding them, right? <laughs> everyone wants the person who's going to be happy no matter what, because they just love the job. Mm-hmm. Um, but actually seeking those people out and getting them to come here, that's, that's been a big piece of it. Um, so working with the county commissioners to find some unique ways, you know, we started crunching the numbers and offering a bonus for a lateral incentive actually saved us about $35,000 a year. Oh, um, okay. and over time, and training and all those things. So, um, you know, trying to find creative ways to spend money that's going to save money, which, you know, is, is a really hard thing to sell sometimes, um, has been a, a big piece of it. You know, late last year, um, about middle last year, I declared a staffing emergency because we just could not get above for, uh, 40 working deputies, um, which was just, it's just beating our staff up. So yeah. um, declaring that allowed me to move my lieutenants back to the road and move people around in violation of their contract. Um which has saved mostly just the burnout of the overtime a little bit. The overtime's still astronomical, but um, you know the staffing thing. We're down to five vacancies now, but we still only have thirty-seven working deputies because all those employees are going through training right now. So the big piece I've been trying to tell the county commissioners is like, there's light at the end of the tunnel, but we're not there yet. Mm-hmm. Um, we've got to make sure that we stick to the plan and really see this thing through. Mm-hmm. I always appreciate it when you put it in terms of like the geographics of it on the, the, the shortage. Like, mm-hmm. can you like, for example, on any given Friday night, how many deputies do you have, you know, Rochester to Tonino? Is there anybody? Yeah. Two. Two for that yeah. whole space. Yeah. Two to three. Um, you know, our minimum staffing on swing shift is eight bodies. So, but you know, the North part of the County is so much more dense and there's so many more 911 calls that we usually mm-hmm. double staff those districts, um, which leaves the, the David and the Edward, which is our two South County districts with one deputy each, um, which is tough because those districts are getting busy too. Um, you know, they're, they're not seeing the massive high rise apartments, but they're still seeing a ton of new development and housing and things like that. So. I've seen a number of times too, where you'd have stuff going on like in that same in that same area. Would you say David and Edward? Yeah, David Edward. Yeah. Uh, like, what do you do then? You just have to draw in staff from up north when yep. you have like two incidents at the same time, like yep. you guys have had. Yep. So you start dragging resources down south, um, and then of course it never fails. The northern districts blow up, and uh, you're pretty much just like, hey, can Lacey, Tumwater, and Olympia send a unit? And then Lacey's like, we're busy. Sorry, we got no unit. I mean, it's just everyone is just at the point of. You know, we're at that yeah. minimum staffing level. You pull Centralia in from time to time too, right? Would they come on? We haven't pulled Centralia, no. no. No, I would say it's really, really rare when you hear county to county help. Most mm-hmm. of the help comes from within within the county, with the exception of Chehalis Tribal, which kind of straddles the county lines. Mm-hmm. Um, we we work with them pretty closely. So, um, When you say the crime rate is still out of control and our staffing is still a mess, is that compared to other areas around you or just objectively? Uh, well, that's just objectively through yeah. crime rates. Uh, I think that, you know, in, in Thurston, what we just continue to see is 
the it's pouring over from Pierce and King. Mm-hmm. Um, I mean, just even again last night, you know, we we keep finding people fleeing in stolen cars and juveniles fleeing in stolen cars and committing carjackings, and they're not from here. Yeah. Um, and you know, my my biggest heartburn with that is that we we see stats and data come out like, oh, well, Thurston County Jail is disproportionately African American. Well, yeah, but how many of them actually live in our county? Mm-hmm. You know, if, if they're coming down to our county and committing these these crimes where they're getting caught in stolen cars and doing carjackings and stealing and vehicle prowling, you know, the bigger question I have is why are they choosing Thurston? Mm-hmm. They have their own counties they can commit crime in, but they're coming to Thurston on purpose. Why is that? Um, so those are the things that I'm trying to push back on a little bit because I don't have the answer, um, mm-hmm. but I also don't want it to look like, oh, well, you know, the sheriff's office just going around arresting all the African-Americans in the county. No, they're not from here. Yeah. Um, when you actually pulled apart the ones who live here and the ones who don't, we're like disproportionately, we, there's under, we're under the, the, yeah. the community correlation there. So it's just a strange thing right now that we're seeing. And, you know, the no pursuit laws have just antagonized all of it. Mm-hmm. So what's that big date you have circled on your calendar then? June, June 6th. 6th. Yeah. Yep. What happened? What, just explain briefly what happens then as far as what you guys are able to do. So on June 6th, um, the legislator passed initiative 2113, um, which changes two pieces of the pursuit legislation that was initially enacted in 2021 and then amended in 23. Um, the two pieces that are changing is they are lowering the threshold to pursue from an imminent threat down to uh poses a safety risk to others. Mm-hmm. And the big piece to that is that they are, there's no longer a, um, a limitation on which crime we can pursue for. So all that we need to pursue when it comes to a crime is any law violation, which includes traffic infractions, suspended driving, reckless driving, all the things that we've been complaining about um, because people just don't recognize the actual impact of that law. I mean, if I went and hopped in you know, a, a black challenger right now that's stolen with tinted windows, and I just started going 150 through the school zone back and forth, there's nothing the police can do to stop me until I crash and hurt someone. Mm-hmm. I mean, and that's, when you actually put it in that perspective, people are like, well, no, I, it's, it, the, the pursuit law thing has been funny to me because people are like, no, it's, that, that's not what it says. I'm like, no, that's what it says. No, yeah. it, it's so unbelievable that people actually, like, even though it's staring them in the face, they don't want to believe it. That's what's- incredible. I've encountered that. Yeah. No, 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 no. From no, this guy. <laughs> He hates cops. Doesn't think they should be able to chase anyone. And I have it on good authority that he's the one that wrote uh, yeah, I fucking hate yes. Derek Sanders on the side. I, I of did. The yes, I was, I, that was great art, but you missed I, a letter. I'm just impressed you won your, your Facebook beef. I will lose all of mine. They take down just pictures of baseball players. And I'll be like, this is our stuff. And they're like, sorry. Yeah. So let me have you do it next time. Yeah, we hate cops. <laughs> Most of our guests on this show lately have been cops. Yeah, they have been. Yeah, thank you. Uh, denim, and I think we need to balance it out. So our next guest is going to be a, a criminal. Well, I mean, <laughs> member. Could, of a, I think that would actually be a really good podcast. I'm just saying, like it would. If you actually found like maybe like a reform criminal who's yeah, that like would be 20 good. Felonies, no, we're going like, to catch somebody in the act and bring him in and be like, come talk that could be it. a little more challenging. <laughs> yeah, I see some laptops on the table that you guys might. Yeah, not they'll, they'll be they'll be gone. Um. You know, following up on Schwartz is a very funny joke. We've been joking that you are our most online sheriff. <laughs> do you think that's accurate? And do you consider yourself the dominant individual law enforcement presence on the internet, at least in the region? Oh, in the region, sure. I mean, there's no one else doing it. And I don't know why, <laughs> honestly. Uh, now, okay. As of two weeks ago, three weeks ago, I do know why. Um, but, you know, in the totality of things, you know, it is like social media is such a good way to inform people of what's going on. And one of the cool things about social media is there's no media bias, right? You yeah. all get the information. Like the Chronicle can follow up immediately or they can just share the information that's out there. You don't get the whole, well, the sheriff just likes, you know, the Olympians. That's the only newspaper he reaches out to and provides info to. We just put it out for everyone. And then, of course, we do follow-ups. But, yeah, I mean, you know, social media sheriff and, you know, get off your phone, Sheriff, and, <laughs> you know, go do something, Sheriff. It's, yeah, you know, I, I would say that there's there's not many others um, out there probably, but mm-hmm. um, I wouldn't be surprised if we started to see more just because, again, I think that people, especially when it comes to law enforcement, there's so much they don't know, but they're craving for just a little more knowledge about the why. Mm-hmm. Like, yeah. we see the what. Everyone's watched cops. Everyone has watched their favorite cop movie. Um, but most of the time, if you're really looking at it analytically, there's probably more, probably easier with more questions and answers. Mm-hmm. Um, so actually discussing policy and discussing the why behind our driving actions, I think that's part of it. Yeah, I can say I appreciate it as a newspaper editor. It's great to know what's happening. We have problems with our own sheriff's office in terms of finding out 
you know, when dead bodies are found and <laughs> things of that nature. <laughs> uh, it's just been a been an issue. Um, so I do appreciate that. I really do. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I mean, it's. It, I think it's helpful for everyone, uh, whether you like us or not. You know? <laughs> But you did mean that the, you like the Chronicle more than the Olympian, right? I listen, I, I listen. I have to remain unbiased <laughs> here. All right, I appreciate all of our journalism stuff because I think it's very important. Thank you. Uh, this is an audio medium, but I'd like to describe what Sheriff Sanders is doing. He's patting Schwartz on the head, <laughs> 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 telling him he's a very good boy. <laughs> Uh, following up on the social media stuff, how do you decide when to respond to a question in the comments or maybe a comment from the haters? Uh, usually when it's, 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 <laughs> it's gotta be something that is blatantly disinformation, but people may not know it is. I think policy. is, I think that's a pretty good boundary for me when mm -hmm. I said it, right? Like, like if I were just a lay person reading this, I could think it's true, but yeah. I, I usually will try to, you know, at least explain it. There's other times where I see people just downright being mean. And so I just poke them back real quick and move yeah. on. But, um, you know, I try to make fun with myself and, and have fun with this stuff because the internet is a brutal, ruthless place um, when it does not forgive. So um, the other piece of that though, right, is I think that there's this, some of these people are, well, you're, you're an elected official. That's so unprofessional. And I'm like, well, it's like, have you looked around at politics lately? Yeah, have you, <laughs> yeah this is actually some of the more cordial stuff I see <laughs> yeah. going around, right? And so, uh, but usually what I'll try to do is if there's pieces I see that, like, um, I really think someone could believe, like, reasonably believe they didn't know, I'll try to, I'll try to set the record straight, mm -hmm. um, especially when it comes to actual operations of the sheriff's office. Some of these ones, like today, you know, I'm, I'm correcting what people are perceiving my decision-making to be like the on-patrol live decision, right? Mm -hmm. Well, you just don't want the public to know what's going on. Like, well, if that's the case, then I'm doing a really, really piss poor job um, because, man, it's such I a bad been, take. I have been logged on for 17 months straight, man. Yeah. You are both showing too much and hiding a lot at yeah. the same time. Exactly. Yeah. I'm like the worst concealer ever. Uh, let's go to that. You mentioned uh, you guys aren't going to be participating in the On Patrol live show. Uh, what led to that decision? I saw you address this on Facebook shortly before we started recording, too. Yeah, it's, I think it's a really cool show. Um, I'll say that out of all the police shows, they seem to do a really good job of like, there's no music, there's no, there's some commentary. That's about it. It's just like raw police footage around the country, which I think is kind of cool because um, people, you know, you don't want to. There's like the drama stuff, but you can go watch nine one one on Fox yeah. if you want to see the over dramatized stuff that we don't actually do. Um, if you actually want to watch like legitimate police work occurring, I think on patrol live is actually a pretty good show. But the big thing right now is like last year we had to cut our training to, to stay within budget. Mm -hmm. Um, we're still at 37 deputies out of 59 allotted, um, which means that, you know, out of that body, they're working about 1200 hours of overtime a month between mm -hmm. the 37 of them. Um, and about 75% of our agency has less than five years on. So you combine all of those risk factors and I don't see how putting, you know, a nationwide camera in the front seat is going to make it any better. Um, so it wasn't, you know, a knock on, on patrol or anything like that. In fact, in the future, we, we may re reconsider that. Uh, but at this point in time, like I got to make sure most importantly that we get our staffing up to par, which now we have the new public safety tax coming in. Um, and then also get to a point where my deputies can take some time off. Yeah. Like, man, that's, that was what killed me was, you know, I'd be like, when are, when's the light going to come at the end of this tunnel, you know? And so that's, that's been my biggest challenge. And, and really the number one thing I focus on since I became the sheriff is fixing the staffing crisis that's been going on. Not since I took over, it's been here for decades. Yeah. Uh, let's talk about helicopters. Mm -hmm. You've been uh, very this excited was, about this. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I was. This was, I saw the headline and just like it started chuckling. It's a I, crazy headline. It, it, it is a crazy <laughs> headline. Um, walk me through the process of approaching, you know, the county commissioners and the county, you know, management saying, hey, I think it's time we had a helicopter. Yeah. Well, first of all, the, the headline's pretty funny. And I, I haven't had a chance. Or I've been busy because normally I like to like walk through this stuff with people on social media and yeah. forums and stuff. But, you know, I, I presented to the county commissioners and forgot that, you know, the jolt is basically using like an AI out of country program to like write headlines for oh, it. Man, so I don't it's think like I saw that Thurston one. County wants helicopter net grabbers and GPS darts. And I'm like, wow, we sound like James Bond. <laughs> yeah, I, know. I was like, Geez, this is just the Batman. We sound like James Bond. <laughs> So actually, this has been something that was uh, in the works with 
the, the former sheriff. Mm-hmm. Um, we were on the DRMO military surplus uh, program for a, a helicopter. And the purpose of the helicopter in the way that we were getting around it without needing additional funding was to use our Marine Services Fund for boat rescue stuff. So it would be a Marine Services helicopter. Um, the big thing about the helicopter, I'll just get this out of the way, it's going to cost us hardly anything. Mm-hmm. Um, we'll be responsible for fuel and insurance. And mm-hmm. the insurance is, it was like $15,000 a year or something like that. I almost pay more for my house. Uh-huh. Um, and so, um, not really, my house isn't that big. <laughs> and so... Um, Northwest Helicopters there in Tumwater was basically like, hey, listen, if we pick up this this military leased helicopter, which is just a tiny little training helicopter, doesn't have any missiles or anything crazy on it, doesn't even have bay doors, it's just a four-seater helicopter, they said, we'll provide the pilot, we'll provide all the training, we will build the helicopter, maintain it, we will paint it for you, we will go get it from Florida when it comes in and bring it up here, mm-hmm. we'll do everything except for fuel and insurance. Um, and I was like, well, that's a pretty good... That's a pretty Can't good entry price for a helicopter. Yeah, that's that's not as outrageous as I was thinking. Yeah, so it's not as it, it you know when you look at trying to get into the helicopter game because every county larger than <laughs> us has a helicopter, um, and the ability to go find people in search and rescue missions and up in Capitol Forest and all these different things, you know, assisting the canine units when it's dark and they can't see anything and they're running through the woods. Yeah, um, all those things combined, I was like, well, for basically less than $100,000 a year, we can get a helicopter um, and start de-escalating some of the pursuit stuff potentially as well. I thought it was a pretty good a pretty good pitch from Northwest Helicopters. How much do you enjoy the phrase, you know, when you're trying to get into the helicopter game? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, when you're trying to get into the helicopter game, uh, you're going to have opponents to that. <laughs> so, How do you I, like your chances, or is it already just determined? I think they're I think they're pretty good, honestly. I mean, just because the cost is so nominal and the benefits are so great, um, and the fact that we can use our boater funding, which we have a ton of boater funds, um, to help pay for like marine rescue and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. I, I think the odds are pretty good. I just haven't had a chance to actually sit down and explain it to the public because, of course, at face value, you know, King County just spent like over six million dollars on their brand new helicopter. So mm-hmm. people are looking at that's our entire new sales tax budget. So when you're looking at these things, people are like uh, automatically assume, you know, astronomical cost and maintenance. And I'm like, well, we're not, we're not paying for any of that. So, um, yeah, I think, I think it'll be, it'll be up to, you know, kind of to the County commissioners, but not really. Cause I'm not really asking for a whole bunch of funding or anything like that. So, yeah. All right. Um, next one, you hired Christopher Burbank, a former Tacoma police officer who was acquitted in the murder trial of Manny Ellis uh, who died while he was in police custody. He then resigned after immense public pressure. Uh, can you just take us through your thinking on that? And, you know, when you made the hire, did you think it was going to be controversial? Um, you know, the best way I can describe this, excuse me, is that, no, I, I didn't think it would be as controversial as it was. So in mm. my own, you know, little mind over here, like I always have to have an endpoint for everything. So like when the when the sheriff's office, the deputies and the county can't agree on pay, they've agreed to go to an arbitrator. Yeah. And when an arbitrator makes a decision, it's final, it's over. And that's how I've always viewed a jury trial. Um, as a police officer, I've had yeah. jury trials not go the way I wanted them to because I'm like, that guy did it. Yeah. But you know what? The jury said he didn't, so that's what happened. And I've mm-hmm. always accepted that. And so um, I think that was just an area where I was on a different page, mm-hmm. completely different page than I would guess probably about 40% of the community, 50% of the community in Thurston County. Um, and so, you know, the biggest error that I made in all of this was that, um, you know, I should have had the wherewithal to tell Mr. Burbank, like, you're not going to want to work here. Yeah, And that's really the biggest piece. Like, there's going to be an uproar in, in one half of the community. You're not going to like that. And I should have had the wherewithal at that point in time. Mm-hmm. So that was that was a big mistake on my part because I could have saved a lot of heartburn for both Burbank and half the community. Yeah. Um, and then, of course, I made the other half mad as well. Yeah, they're so, still mad at you. Yeah, so, uh, you know, I'm in, in that case, I guess that's how you find out you're a true independent um, is when <laughs> everyone's really mad at you. And so, uh, but you know what? At the same time, I also had to look look at myself in the mirror and say, you know what? Like I can admit it, I'm wrong. Mm-hmm. I can admit that I'm not perfect. And that is what I would expect if I were a deputy working for me. No one wants to work for someone and no one wants to deal with a cop who thinks they're never wrong. Yeah. Um, so the ability to say, you know what? I messed up. I'm going to own this. I'm going to let the community air their grievance. I'm going to move on from this and do better. That was pretty much the only path forward. 
Do you think that Burbank should be able to be a police officer somewhere? Like if there is a community that would have it, it will be. Yeah. Yeah. If he want, I doubt he wants to. Mm-hmm. Um, but the, the reality is that he was acquitted. Uh, Tacoma PD could not find any policy violations, despite the fact it sounded like they tried really hard to. Um, and so much so that their mayor wanted him gone so bad. They just paid them a bunch of money to leave. Um, I don't, I don't think that, I mean, they're not going to get decertified. Mm-hmm. And this whole federal investigation thing that's going on, I, that it's a review. It's not an investigation. Mm-hmm. Um, it, it's, I, I would be hard-pressed to believe they're going to come up with anything based on everything that's unfolded. Yeah. All right. Uh, how often are you on patrol, and what's your favorite shift? Night shift, uh-huh. no doubt. Um, I usually will try to come in anywhere from 6 to 8 p.m. and stays as late as I can stay up. Yeah. Takes a few more Red Bulls these days. Um, but uh, I try to go out every every week if I can. Yeah, mm-hmm. every Friday or Saturday night, I'll, I'll try to cruise out there, you know, notwithstanding some of my child care duties and other things that I have to do in life. But, yeah, I try to get out there as much as I can. Like, if there's a night where I'm not doing anything and I don't have, I don't have child care stuff, I'll, I'll go work. Yeah. Uh, do you have a favorite area to patrol? Yeah, Lacey. It was where I. It was where I. It's supposed to be South Thurston, man. <laughs> yeah, no, 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 no. Know no. your audience. It's where I. Uh, I know. Know your audience, right? I gotta fake it. No, but. we got Nisqually Valley news up there. It's fine. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's close enough. Um, yeah, I like the Lacey area. It's where I worked as a deputy for six years before becoming sheriff, and mm-hmm. it's just that's where you go if you wanna if you wanna go from call to call and have a busy night and have people running from you all night. It's a it's a good wor- uh, a good district to work. Do you have a favorite crime? <laughs> a favorite crime? I mean, yeah. I mean, like to commit or to commit or like to <laughs> investigate. I mean, Open ended. Open ended. Well, I um, I don't have any crimes I particularly like to commit. Um, <laughs> I'd have to think on that one a little bit, I guess. But uh, for investigating, I mean, it's it, the most cat and mouse thing in the entire world is eluding a police vehicle, right? Yeah. I mean, and and the thing about the thing about eluding, you know, is sometimes like last night you find that people just run for really dumb reasons, but a lot of times they don't. And one of the things that I always like to do as a deputy is, you know, doing good investigations, absolutely. Like that's important and we all even for the crimes that we don't like investigate. Like I never like to investigate frauds. Frauds aren't fun to investigate, but they're mm-hmm. still crimes and you got to deal with them. Um but there's also the piece of like finding people who don't want to be found. Um, those are the ones that I'm really interested in um, because usually they're committing more crimes as they go. <laughs> so, um, yeah, you know, when people have the uh, the willingness to flee from police, whether it's on foot or in a vehicle or on a boat, whatever it is, um, I'm automatically my interest is peaked because I want to know why. Yeah. Um, so I think those ones are just really interesting and just the challenge of of even capturing fleeing vehicles and fleeing people safely. It's such a challenge yeah. um, that I, I like that challenge. I, I, it's it's difficult. It's really challenging to do. Um, calling out a high-speed chase and, and getting in a foot pursuit and going over fences and running with the dog through through the river, like, it's all really challenging, but, man, it's rewarding when you finally catch someone and, you know, they've got a, a warrant for murder and the mm. car's stolen and, you know, you find a stolen gun. I mean, that's like the epitome of police work. That's what everyone gets in it for, I think. Uh, you mentioned boat pursuits. Do you get to do a lot of those? And are those like no. Miami Vice? <laughs> no, but they are pretty funny sometimes when they do occur, when you get the fair to yield on like Lawrence Lake or Summit Lake. And uh, it's just kind of a strange deal. But uh, yeah, we've had a few a few boating eludings, <laughs> mostly like DUI. A- so at least under current state law, it would be pursuable. Mm-hmm. <laughs> it's just like a boat pursuit on a, pursuit on a lake. You're like, what? Yeah, where are you going, bro? <laughs> where going, are you going? going circles. <laughs> yeah, we'll wait. Um, Aaron, like, your favorite crimes indecent indecent exposure, right? If your sirens, bangers of the week are any indication, oh, yeah, oh, of course. Yeah. Do you have any sort of What's, like? Oh, go sorry, ahead. Go do ahead. you have any sort of like spike strips for boats? For no, pursuit? we don't. You just put uh, a hole inside of a boat. <laughs> oh no, we don't. You might be onto something though. <laughs> you should look into that. Especially yeah. if you could drop it from the helicopter. Yeah. I feel like what we would probably do is attach like a six pack of beer to a floaty and throw it out there on <laughs> oh, a fishing bait, line, bait them, okay. and just like, bait ooh. them into the yeah. boat launch and then snag them up. <laughs> okay. Uh, is there anything that's illegal? that you think should be legal <laughs> uh, or anything that's just like a ticky tack. We're like, hey, like this he, isn't worth it. Like, excited about this oh, one. Well, first of all, the carpool lane, I think that's <laughs> about the most ridiculous thing in the entire world. The whole carpool thing. Okay. And I just, I don't accept any version of it. Like I've heard all of the excuses as to why, well, if we remove the carpool lane, 
then more people will just demand that lane and then we'll still have traffic backups. And I'm like, well, then why do we add more lanes to I-5 then? Can anyone yeah. make sense of the yeah, logic that's there? A good so, point. yeah, like <laughs> it's not making like I'm poking holes in the theory here over and over again. So carpooling, definitely just okay. get rid of the lane. Let us all use the lane because there's nothing more frustrating than on my way back from SeaTac Airport on Sunday after dropping a fail member off. And we're only using three lanes and one of them's wide open. And so that's that's. That so you're verse. saying if you see a guy with a mannequin that happens once or twice a year, you're kind of giving a wink and nod and cruising I don't even on pay by. attention. Nah, I see. I, I yeah. will tell you right now, I've never once looked over to see if someone was violating. <laughs> that's the how carpool. much you hate it. That's how much I don't care. <laughs> oh, yeah. um, right. good to know. Noted, I don't know. Yeah. It's kind of a tough one for me, right? Because like my whole perspective and outlook as a as a as a cop is more of the like people who are making mistakes and you know. They're, they're doing things that aren't smart, but they're not rising to the level of serious crimes. Like, trying to figure out a way, like, is, is it really in the best interest of everyone in our collective society to put this person in the criminal justice system or write them a, a big ticket or anything like that? And then on the other hand, somewhere there's a switch for me, and it's definitely with felonies, but certainly with a lot of the misdemeanors of, like, you're going to jail. Um, and so somewhere there's my, my balance runs out. Mm -hmm. Um, and so, you know, I, I try to take a really strong stance against felonies, obviously domestic violence, driving under the influence, the things that I can statistically relate to death and injury and loss. Um, the other things, right? Like minor speeding and stuff, give people warnings. And I think you see that a lot with sheriff's offices in general. Um, Hey, you know, you're going 10 over, you're going 15, 20 over, slow it down, get to where you're going safe and move on to the next pressing, pressing matter. But, uh, yeah, I, as far as crimes, you know, there's there's not too many. Um, and honestly, with a lot of the crimes, you know, even even some of the crimes that I don't necessarily agree with, like prostitution's a good one, right? I mean, mm -hmm. if you have two consenting adults, then someone has to explain to me where the criminal offense is occurring. Yeah, um, if there's no, like, trafficking involved. That's or, the problem, you know, though. Yeah. And see, that's the problem. And that's where I get hung up on, like, things like prostitution is because I think two consenting adults who are truly consenting can exchange goods for for sexual intercourse. Um, mm. On the other hand, there are so many people involved in prostitution who are not there willingly, and they'll tell you to your face that they're there willingly, but they really aren't. Yeah. That's where it just becomes, that's a challenging one. Um, mm. But yeah, other than that, there's not too many that I don't think shouldn't be crimes. Um, I have to think about that one a little bit longer. <laughs> that was a pretty good answer. Oh, yeah, the carpool take for me. That, that's it's money, right? Yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, it's not wrong. Yeah, and it's what... <laughs> It's one of those ones where you don't, it doesn't hit you until you're sitting on I-5 going, like, wait a second, there is an entire lane next to me that is mm -hmm. wide open. And it's dangerous because you got people trying to jump into that lane at a dead stop while that lane's going 70. Yeah. Um, just open it up. My yeah. problem I usually have with the carpool lane is, like, it's the left lane, so I feel like it's supposed to be the fastest, but there'll be, like, a family of four going just slow as hell over yeah. there. 52 and a yeah. 60. Yeah. Well, it's a carpool lane. Yeah, yeah we got to let him in there. <laughs> uh, what's the meanest thing anyone has ever said to you in your capacity as a law enforcement officer? <laughs> um, oof. Will this get the news dump banned? Uh, <laughs> from Spotify? Yeah, probably. <laughs> probably, man. Um, man, the people have said some stuff that... and I, It's hard to say it's mean because I don't really take offense to it, right? I mean, most yeah. of the people who are saying mean stuff to me are drunk. That's the first thing. Wow. Um, so I've been called the N-word, all these different things, because people are just so intoxicated. Yeah. Um, but, you know, <laughs> this one's bad. So I was up at the protests in um, Olympia, and someone who is, and I don't know what the correct term for someone who is short. Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> short person. A, short, a very, very <laughs> a short, short person. Short you know, king. Probably no longer. Than th they called me a midget. Um, <laughs> they called me a midget. And like that... Because I am not the tallest person in the world, so mm. that one actually hurt coming from someone who's short. <laughs> um, See, I would have thought it would have hurt more coming from, like, you know, a 6'8 guy. No, it doesn't. There. No, it's it doesn't. Short. Especially, you know, back in the day, because we did this dumb stuff in the pro where we used to all stand with our sticks in the protest line. Mm -hmm. um, and we, we had our badge numbers on the front of our helmets. And I'm like, good idea, right? Yeah. You know, now we've got all these people. And, I mean, we're standing up there. They, I'll tell you what. If you want entertainment, protesters are some of the funniest people you will ever meet in your entire life. I sat on the protest riot line for the entire summer of 2020. Mm -hmm. um, that's yeah, 2020. And uh, they will tell, I mean, one of the guys, you know, we're standing there with Olympia and it was an Olympia guy. I don't remember his name, um, but they're like, Hey, Hey, does, does 62 have two watches on? 
And all you see all the way down the protest line is all the cops look down the line <laughs> and they see one of us hold, he's got two watches on. They're like, yeah, does he have two Fitbits? And I mean, the protesters are just comical down there. But yeah, one of the protesters who was very short, um, he called me a midget and that hurt. <laughs> Damn, that would be hurtful. Yeah. And of course, uh, he's like 60 because that was my badge number. So yeah. everyone knows who he's talking to oh. as well. Yeah. How tall are you? Six foot. Yeah, you didn't strike yeah. me as a short yeah. guy. Aaron's short. So. Yeah, I'm, I'm a yeah, I'm completely five, average 5'9". Five, 5'10 five, 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 on a good five, day, five. you know? Yeah. I don't like where this is headed. <laughs> the little guy. Um, the question I'm sure you've been asked a dozen times before, uh, do you have your eyes on a higher offense eventually or at any point? Or No. No? Nope. See, that's the answer that a politician would always give, though, because you don't right. want to give the effect that you're you're right. But I did have this like discussion with a colleague who is just, he's convinced you're, you've got your eyes set on Congress or something. <laughs> just because I was like, funny. I don't know. He said he's not online. And they're like, that's but like what they, that's what they all say. That's what yeah. every politician yeah, would like say. Like, job. play their collar, play their cards tight to their to their chest. Uh, for me, I would never wanted to get into politics, mm. and I didn't run for this job to win either. I think that's another big thing that you know people have already forgotten. And I yeah. said that during my campaign numerous times. Like, listen, because people would be like, "You are so young. You have no experience. You don't have any union experience. No executive leadership. No, you've never supervised a squad. You were not in the military. You've never done anything like this." And I was like, "I know, but I'm not here to win. I'm just here to talk to you." And then I ended up winning, but. Even like part of my problem is that I would have to lose lose my love for the job, yeah, um, to go any higher because there's nowhere higher that you can go for law enforcement. Other, I mean, federal John Batiste, federal. He's got to retire someday. Yeah, oh, state patrol. <laughs> yeah. yeah, no, thank yeah. you. Um, <laughs> I love our state troopers, but like, I don't want to be in an appointed position underneath the governor. I don't care what governor's in office. Yeah, um, not even semi bird. No, <laughs> no, I don't. I don't want to be. I don't see. I don't even it being is. a police chief or anything like that. Like. Truthfully, like if this whole thing didn't work out or I was like, listen, I'm done. Like I want to go back to I'd want to go back to being a police officer full time, mm -hmm. like all the time work in a district. And so that's why things like Congress and stuff don't don't really they just don't get me excited. Um, like coming to work as the sheriff does like coming to work as the sheriff. I'm like, listen, I got like 100 problems over here and we got a school shooting threat at Nisqually Middle. Like, that's my right. new problem for the day, yeah. right? And it keeps me so engaged all the time and having to think up new creative solutions and communicating with people and working on all that. And I just don't see that in, as being a state lawmaker or a county commissioner or yeah. a member of Congress. So, uh, You mentioned just now you, were, you, you weren't running to win specifically. When you did win and it kind of set in, was there a moment where you were like, ah, oh, shit? Well, I didn't run to win. But you can probably recall a time where um, I won the primary mm -hmm. by like 5%, which yeah. that was like my wake-up call of like, oh, no. <laughs> yeah. Like people are actually <laughs> – like people actually believe in me. Okay, well – you know, this isn't becoming just me talking about sheriff's office issues because honest to God, my purpose of running for office was to kind of stoke a little bit of a fire in the agency mm -hmm. um, and be like, let's discuss these things. Let's have an open, candid conversation with people. And then I anticipated losing terribly, but like maybe like some new ideas come from it. Right. And yeah. some some better direction. Um, and then that's obviously not what happened. Um, but looking at this whole thing, you know. There was a point in time where I won the primary, and then I got placed under kind of a phony investigation immediately, and that's when I got pissed off. Yeah. Um, because I was like, listen, I've been pretty cordial. I've been critical, but everything, like, listen, when I initially announced my campaign, I had, like, 30 people come and give me, like, personal dirt on the prior sheriff. Mm -hmm. and I'm like, I don't want any of that. Yeah. Like, this is about what he's doing in his professional life, and those things are all up on the on the, on the the board, like, We'll go after that stuff, but I'm like, I don't need to hear about his personal life. I don't care about that. Yeah. Um, and when I went up five percent, and I saw like the fangs come out, and all of a sudden, all these things, I was like, all right, now I'm gonna, now I'm gonna whoop you down. Um, that was when I decided, like, I'm running to win now. This yeah. isn't much of a conversation starter. This is, I'm putting an end to this whole, this whole thing, um, and uh, really doubled down my efforts. All right, backfired is what you're saying. <laughs> yes. Yeah. That would be a, yeah, that would be a good way to put it. Uh, it's pretty bad when the alleged victim comes out and says that none of this happened. Right. Yeah, that's yeah, pretty bad. Uh, if a future opponent were to gather some dirt on you, would their first bit be that he says he's six foot foot when he's really five ten? I'm probably closer <laughs> to five eleven. <laughs> yeah. No, you got to claim the six though. Yeah, really I always claim six. Yeah. 
If you own a pair of shoes that gets you to six. Oh, these ones I'm wearing right here. Yeah. Yeah. If you've been six foot once on one measuring stick, you're six foot for life. Yeah. When I actually got in my car crash, the doctor measured me at six foot and never looked back. (laughs) (laughs) That's good. Never looked back. Rarified air. You still have a chance. You could have a you know midlife growth. Get a nice pair of Timberlands and you know, <laughs> <laughs> some lugs, yes. maybe. I don't think it's going to happen for me at, at my age. Um, yeah, you've been great, man. Thanks for coming on. Yeah. Schwartz, you got anything else? No, no, not unless there's anything else you wanted to add or anything we didn't get to ask you about. No, um, you know there were a couple things that I ran on, and it, the cool thing for me so far has been you know oh you can't do that you're not going to achieve this you won't be able to do that but mm-hmm. honestly like in my opinion like really looking at myself through a critical lens. I've accomplished some stuff in the first 16 months that I think a lot of people would love to achieve in 10 years in office. Yeah. Um, getting new funding for the one of the worst staff sheriff's offices in the state. Looks like we're, we're on track to maybe get a new building where we're all inside one one decent building now. Um, getting Helping, I wasn't the only person, but helping to get the pursuit laws overturned. Um, you know, All of these things are things that I told my staff, like, I can't promise it, but mm-hmm. I'm going to work as, like, no one will outwork me when it comes to trying to get this stuff for you guys and uh, really seeing the relationship that we've been able to build with the commissioner's office. Mm-hmm. Um, and a lot of that just came down to hey, come on a ride along with me. Let me show you, let me, let me give you a PowerPoint, you know, example of why this is important. Um, those things have all proven to be really useful for us. Um, and again, we're swinging for home runs out here because yeah. when you're in last place, you, you don't pass up on, on anything. So. All right. He's 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 posted to Facebook fifteen times since this podcast <laughs> interview began. Yeah, don't worry about it over here. I got fast fingers. <laughs> All right, Derek, thanks a lot. We'll let you go on that. Appreciate you. All right, we're back. What did you guys think of Derek Sanders? Yeah, it was a good interview. I feel like he was pretty transparent, open. Yeah, he was. He was. Pretty, you know what? Guy's got some charisma. Yeah, he's, he's like it's a cool dude. I didn't sure. agree with everything he said, but I, I appreciated the manner in which he said it. I know you're a prostitution hardliner. I, <laughs> That was a You wild. want to file Sharia law on prostitution. <laughs> Cody is still just mouth agape over here thinking about the prospect of uh, what if Derek Sanders does run for higher office. Cody's just thinking about riding in that HOV lane with a lady of the night. <laughs> <laughs> and how Derek Sanders would <laughs> look the other way. He wouldn't even look. <laughs> Derek Sanders would pull him over just to give him a fist bump. <laughs> All right, we're doing segments now. And first up, we've got Tales from the Takes page. And Brian Mitke has laid down a wholesome Twin Cities challenge in honor of Earth Day. He talks about going to work parties. Uh, after he turned this one in last Friday, he sent me a text that said, I may or may not have been in my bag for this one. I, <laughs> this is, <laughs> uh, you know what? I, I appreciate when Mickey's like, oh, I'm feeling it. I'm feeling myself. I mean, he's on, he's, he's, he's on a hitting streak right now. So it's one of those situations. It's like early in the season. He's batting like 450. People are wondering. Yeah. Oh, people are doing this the math. Be the over, season? He's getting random, randomly drug tested. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> Sir, you've tested positive for sleepy time tea. What? <laughs> Surprise testing for whimsy. Yeah. All right. But yeah, anything else notable from the opinion section or can we? Well, we have uh, John Braun. The hits just keep coming for Democrats <laughs> cap and trade the law. <laughs> and we have a couple letters to the editor. Uh, one today from a gentleman, an 87 year old uh, gentleman in Ethel who said we need to elect individuals who work together to unite the country. And then he suggested... Th- Marie Glusenkamp Perez and Peter Abarno are both good candidates, and he made his case as to why in terms of them not being the type to be on the attack all the time. Blah, blah, blah. Good letter. Um, Braun writing a letter that's basically like, look at the failures of the Democrats. What a, what a chaotic party after... Uh, that was the raucous convention, sir. It was raucous. It was you not wanna, chaotic. Do you want to relitigate the Jim Walsh debate? Or? No, I don't, man. I, <laughs> I saw some untoward internet activity. He called somebody an incel in the comments. I know. I know. Jim Walsh, that is. Yeah, he was, he was feisty. And then, yeah, I did see all the ha-ha-ha-ha-ha periods. <laughs> yeah, it's like psycho behavior. No, I wouldn't say that. I, I mean, just think, it's not healthy. You know, somebody just needs to let him know to let that punctuation go. I've been working on that. Because, you know, Cody's generation thinks it's, you know, passive aggressive to use punctuation. Yeah. That's why he doesn't Just use any in his cut lines. Somebody's That's been reading the, the New York <laughs> that Post. That was a low blow. <laughs> uh, Julie McDonald wrote Herrera Butler deserved more respect at the peaceful and successful GOP <laughs> convention. Uh-huh. Peaceful and successful are not in the headline, but anyways. Yeah, that's, uh, those are the highs and lows of it. 
We had a letter from the Republican uh, Party's executive committee, Lewis County. GOP convention was success despite negative media reports. <laughs> so, uh, what was the quote you sent from both Jim Walsh and one of your favorite Twitter handles? Uh, uh, I'm not angry. <laughs> don't you dare put in the newspaper that I'm Any angry. Another thing, I'm not mad. Don't put in the newspaper that I got mad. <laughs> Uh, but yeah, that, there's your tales from the takes page. All right. This podcast is brought to you by The Roof Doctor. No fancy segue here. We're just trying to get out of here. The Roof Doctor asks, is your roof under the weather? Because they've been providing roofing services that include new roofs, roof repair, roof cleaning, and emergency roofing since 1959 in Lewis County. They are family-owned, and they will always give you a free estimate before the first hammer is swung. Give the Roof Doctor a call at 360-736-0246 or visit theroofdoctor.com to learn more. And from there, we go to People's Champion of the Week, and I have Centralia College Running Start student Maya Hankins, who was named the number one ranked student in the state at a ceremony recognizing the all-Washington academic team in Olympia on Thursday. Read down the, do you have the link to that? Read the, the haul she got for that. Yeah, I read that this morning when we were proofing. She hauled in Buku dollars. Uh, 5000 All-USA Award, $2,250 New Century Transfer Scholar Award, $1,000 Washington State Associate of College Trustees Award, 750 from Washington State Employee Credit Union, and $217 from KeyBank. Pretty good. Not bad. I have an entry. Um Actually, there's several within the, the single news story, but last week uh, we had the headline, Man Who Survived Jump from Golden Gate Bridge sped, mm-hmm. Spreads Message of Hope in Chehalis. Um, and this was Kevin Hines uh, came to... He actually gave two speeches. He gave one during the day at WF West and then one in the evening um, for the community. So Kevin Hines, he'll, he'd be one. I've heard from many attendees who said that that was just an excellent event. Then the second one from this one would be Abby Alexander, a WF West high school senior who helped make all of this happen. Um, I think she correctly noted that people or youths, teenagers are probably going to want to talk about this stuff more um, if they're being talked to by their fellow students and not talked at. Yeah, I think so. And then a third. So sometimes when you're editing copy, just raw copy, you just hit something and you're like, what the hell? Uh-huh. <laughs> like, so Mitchell starts his story with this uh, uh, narrative of Kevin Hines jumping off the bridge in September of 2000 and how he immediately regretted it, fell 25 stories, hit the ground, um, was horribly, horribly injured by the 15,000 pounds of pressure um, and was treading water, thought he was going to die. And then I, I, get to, I get to this line. Uh, facing near cert- certain death as he treaded water, a sea lion who Hines <laughs> nicknamed Herbert buoyed, buoyed Hines' body until a Coast Guard boat arrived. Huh. And we're killing him up here. <laughs> well. <laughs> I know. Wow. You know, a lot of times people talk about being on the right side of history. <laughs> <laughs> How does it feel not to be one of those people? This really reframes the debate for me. Uh, I also just like, I have so many questions. I haven't seen a sea lion like idling before. I didn't know, like, was he just getting pulled around by it? He said it, it when it started. It was he. It was circling him because I was there. I listened to the speech. Okay. I was taking photos. It said it was circling him, and he started punching it because he thought it was a shark. Oh my gosh! Yeah, and then it just was like resting underneath him, kind of, and keeping him afloat. Yeah, just amazing. And then he said uh, his dad took him to the exact same spot on the bridge a year later because he said he needed closure, and he made him pick a flower and drop it off the bridge. And he said he dropped a flower on the same day a year later from the same spot, and when it hit the water, a sea lion jumped like right over top of it. Oh my gosh. Wild. Sick. You know Sick. what? The pro sea lion people of the Columbia River Basin need this story. Mm-hmm. Well, Specifically well, a California well. sea lion. <laughs> I don't know how the anti sea lion people have been real quiet since Kevin Hines <laughs> came to yeah, town. Yeah. <laughs> I just, that was one of the most unbelievable things I've read in a story. It was just wild. <laughs> All right. I'd so. have the sickest sea lion tattoo if I was Kevin Hines. Just it's like his, a big, old, yeah. like it's a his, back size sea lion. It's his logo. He like had my back, so I have his uh, thing. <laughs> Sirens banger of the week. I've got two entries. First up, a disorderly parent was asked to leave a baseball game in Centralia on April twenty fourth. Apparently, reported that he refused to leave until the police were called. And the I was at says, that game and had to leave early to be on this podcast. And you missed it. This was so Wednesday. Yeah. 
The parent had gathered his children and were, was leaving when police arrived, according to police. Uh, don't, don't be that guy. You left out the part where they quoted him as saying, I thought this was America. I thought Jeez. this was America with his shirt ripped off. <laughs> And then the other one, uh, three firearms were reported lost or stolen in jails on April 23rd. Officers responded to help Jeff Wilson look for his guns. Oh, man. <laughs> Leave that man alone. <laughs> He's self-reported, man. <laughs> if you've lost your guns and need to pick up some new ones, where can you stop? Maybe in Chehalis to get outfitted with some new ones? Oh, you could go to Chehalis Outfitters is where you could go. They've yeah. they got guns. they got fishing rods. they got clamming equipment. Uh, I just assigned to Mitchell today a. I want him to do a story on gold panning because they've got uh, they've got what, like what do they call it? Gold, a spe- spe- I don't know. Someone who looks for gold. Prospector? prospector. Prospector. That's yeah. what I was looking for. <laughs> uh, yeah, they've got equipment for that over there now. So I'm hoping we'll have a nice little feature news story on that. Mitchell asked if he finds someone who uses it, goes out with them, and finds gold. If it belongs to him or if it belongs to the company. Any of you have thoughts on that? Belongs to the. the I think it belongs to the landowner. I think. Wherever, I think wherever the, you prospected the gold from. I think the correct answer for Mitchell would be to say, "What gold?" Yeah, that's what I said. <laughs> I would just drop that into your pocket and say you got skunked. Yeah. Um, so they I got, got going to, on. They also got the canning seminar with uh, David Sherry coming up June first, ten a.m. and two p.m. You can drop in and get all sorts of details on that. It's twenty three bucks, but as we mentioned last week, you take away double that in swag in swag alone. Yeah, Plus absolutely. All Plus your new, all the knowledge, yeah. of course. And then, last note on Shahil's Outfitters, we talked a little bit about the shelter issue. They had Red Rose Rescue out from Rochester again. This is the second time. Yeah, they had the puppies there at Shahil's Outfitters on uh, Saturday and adopted out a lot of them. It looks like there's still a few left. And Red Rose Animal Rescue is one of the ones that I have some photos that were sent in, and we'll be sharing those later this week. All right. And if you want to learn more, go to cnboutfitters.com or give them a call at 748-3337. But mostly just, you know where the store is. Just stop by. Yeah, stop by. Cody, you're not wearing any Shales Outfitter gear today? No. You wore it seven days in a row. Now it's finally in the wash, right? No, it doesn't even need to be washed. It's so high quality. I just thought I should change up. The <laughs> That's not true. <laughs> <laughs> I, I should change up the swag today. I'm talk to HR good, about this. Good answer. All right, Facebook comments of the week. Do you want to hear a gold panning story? Let's go. Yes. I was covering like a chamber dinner or something years ago, and I was just a reporter, and there was this loud older guy at the table with us, and he was like ranting to me about how he was a gold panner, and I was like, okay, like, sure, I just want to like eat and get out of here. And he's like, you know, I was a paratrooper too, and I was like, I, I believe you. And he's like, oh, you don't believe me, do you? And I was like, okay. <laughs> oh, God, man, come on. He's like, you know, I jump out of a plane from 100 feet in the air, and I was like, that doesn't sound possible. And he's like, you wouldn't think it was possible, would you? And I was like, what are you talking about? <laughs> Anytime I think about gold pan, I think about this guy claiming, and he was like not a small guy. Like he would have dropped fast. Mm-hmm. Just did, bragging about jumping out of a plane 100 feet in the Do air. Do you feel better now that you've weight shamed him? <laughs> wow. Yes, just like just like the, the small person who told our friend <laughs> Derek Sanders. <laughs> You could tell that hurt him too. It did. It, 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 it stung. It's the first it thing a, that came to mind. We also did have Derek Sanders stand back to back with Cody to confirm he's six foot and uh, yeah, close enough to call. Yeah. yeah. All right. Facebook comments of the week um, on the lawsuit against the PUD. This commenter said, "Reminds me of that time last year when our county commissioner claimed that serial murders come from checks notes reading books." That would have been a fun liability for the county. Sad, the likes of which you've never seen. I forgot all about that. I thought that was a commenter who said you that. You guys could be on this. No, like serial Swope, killers. Swope compared uh, serial killer Ted Bundy. I he still blamed it on watching pornography. It was in the. I thing. remember the comparison. For some reason, I thought it was a public commenter, but I could be uh, wrong. It was. It was him. Um, yeah. All right. Uh, another commenter said should have been filed on April first. Good bit. Um, on a post about Grizzlies coming back to the North Cascades. People had some thoughts. There was a rich discussion on that one. Hopefully we can hurry and clone some T-Rex too, because they used to be around also. <laughs> fair, <laughs> fair point. That's and this valid. guy this guy says, they're doing it to wipe out our food supply. It's all about control anymore. How fast do you think one grizzly bear is going to wipe out the entire food chain? I, It'd be a bad day to be a picnic basket. Yeah, that's, <laughs> that's exactly what I was going to say. <laughs> If you, you haven't done your research, sir. <laughs> if you you thought a, I was too young to know that <laughs> reference, huh? <laughs> if you had a nefarious plan to wipe out the entire food supply, do you think the tops on the list would be like, we're going to put a bear in the mountains? <laughs> no, they, they want like 200 bears out there. Yeah, sure. Where, do they get, where are they going to get these bears, though? 
I don't, it's in the story. They're moving them, I think, from British Columbia. Well, maybe. a miner a found a piece somewhere? of amber lodged deep in the Amazon rainforest <laughs> with <laughs> mosquito in it. Oh, you say there's a bear in it. <laughs> a bear. <laughs> and then this one commenter says, people will die, but at least there will be better parking at the trailheads. And I was like, hey, is, this a, is this a drawback? What's... <laughs> I don't know. I lived in Montana for a while, as I often brag, and there is a lot of grizzly bears there. I think more so probably, if you count Yellowstone, it's just about any other state. Yeah. People find a way to live with them. But they do eat your animals from time to time. Well, I saw an episode of Yellowstone where Rip had to (laughs) shoot a grizzly bear, and that's how I believe every day will be here forever now. Have you ever watched that Leonardo DiCaprio movie where he gets ripped apart by a bear? Or ripped apart is one way to put it. Yeah. You know, <laughs> yeah. I know, the internet. I know where you're driving that. <laughs> and then my final comment was, this wasn't even on a Chronicle post, but I thought it was so funny. It was a Marie Glusacant Perez post announcing funding for Packwood's new sewer project. This commenter says, buying votes with our tax dollars. Oink, oink. What else do you want your tax dollars to go to? That's the whole point. Oh, just trying to buy my vote with sensible projects that benefit me and my town, are you? Trying to curry favor by performing your sworn duties? No thanks. I'll vote for the extremist lunatic who spent the weekend wearing a bib to catch the drool from the police protest on college campus. Thank you very much. (laughs) I I did say how this reminded me of uh, the State of the Union when Biden was jabbing at the Republican side with Mm. just like he announced one of his plans and they kind of grumbled and he's just like, yeah, but you sure liked announcing it to your constituents or something to that effect. Exactly. I I get where you're going from, but I, yeah, there's a contingency that thinks that too much money is coming out of the federal government, Aaron. If you know that. I mean, the money's coming out anyway. Don't you want it to come to you? Yes. You can get a sick helicopter. (laughs) Yes. Hey, we've learned that was actually very reasonably priced. <laughs> you learned. I had already known because I read the news. Hey, you know how this head. We don't need to relitigate any of this. I was always right about the sea lions. And yeah, I, about helicopters. I gotta say, the sea lion. That was a that was a plot twist. I did not see coming. <laughs> yeah. Um, just because one sea lion was good though doesn't mean they all are. Cody just over here hashtagging not all sea lions. <laughs> What other news did we miss? There's a lot, but I'm just going to do hard hitting just just the headlines uh, starting with today's edition. After nearly three years of delays, United Learning Center construction set in Centralia on May 1st. We are going to be driven from that parking lot like protesting students at Columbia University. They're just going to drive us out. We're going to have to park in the back. I already park in the back. And uh, I have already lamented how my spot's going to get taken by one of you North Siders. I'm not looking forward to it. Yeah, I don't like that at all. Uh, Bronze calling for more legislative action after three infants exposed to fentanyl. One of them died. This was all in the Everett area all over four days. He says there was legislation put forward by the Republicans that never that passed the Senate, never got a vote in the House because the committee leaders said not a single person would vote for it, would punish a parent or a guardian if they allowed their child to have access to fentanyl. I, I mean, isn't that already illegal? Uh, read not? the story. Uh, it would have strengthened the response to it, I guess. Like, you would face more consequences than currently if oh. you did that. Yeah, you're not, well, fentanyl's not legal, so. <laughs> <laughs> That's it. <laughs> Without a pres- <laughs> prescription. Uh, Cody just went on a run on Saturday. He shot Fort Borst uh, Kids Fishing Derby from the Centralia Lions Club, shot Scatter Creek Animal Clinic, had some Oregon State University uh, students there getting veterinary training. If you want to see a cat, a photo of a cat splayed out with its arms and legs I held did, down. You guys, I did everything I can. I know you did. Uh, it, was, that cat. it was specifically <laughs> a neutering. Uh, so <laughs> I did everything. I noticed how there was only six photos because everyone else was, I could not the be work. used. <laughs> I didn't see a single testicle. And exactly. Yeah. I, I I'm a professional. That. <laughs> Uh, Shahala has approved an agreement with Lewis County for its treatment court, which we have talked about before. Oh, yeah, that's a good idea. Counties. Uh, side note: There's going to be a celebration this Friday for the first connection to the county and Toledo Tells uh, public-private partnership connecting mm-hmm. 2,300 homes to. You say public-private internet partnership. I say socialism. <laughs> Uh, let's see. He actually threw the numbers in there. So the the project includes uh, 134 miles of construction line funded by a $23.5 million grant from the state Uh and 2.35 million in matching funds from Toledo Tell. Why am I paying for Toledo's internet? 50, 50. Hmm. Move to Winlock. You can get that internet. (laughs) If you want to get your fill of it, you go down there once a day and just sit there and just on the stream, stream stream hard. (laughs) 
there's also a fishing derby out in Mineral Lake that we made it to. Let's see. I'm just gliding through as quickly as I can. Uh, this was very popular. Brody Smeal of Chehalis exhibited the champion calf in the Junior Heifer Calf Division Two category mm, at the Western nice. Regional Junior Angus Show. Hell yeah. In Reno, Nevada. Everybody loved that story. You left out the uh, Revolutionary War that I, I just documented. got to it. Yeah. He went and shot the uh, American Revolution encampment. We're not really reenactment, right? But they were like doing stuff that people did yeah, back then. It was an encampment. Oh, that was over at the like the museum, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. I saw some I people got, there. I got a six shot of the Redcoats firing a cannon with a that gigantic helicopter in the jet. That, that was they have a good shot in the back. That was a good Sick. shot, and I'm surprised that shot hasn't been got before because we've I know, shot I so many of those, <laughs> and I've gotten so many cannon shots. That but was yeah, my first thought when I got there, I was did like, you see him Yo. and just scream 1776? And go I just like, heard an eagle screech in my head. I was like, oh yeah, oh yeah, I know what shot I'm about to get. Uh, and then Cody also what, picked up what the hell is a kilometer? <laughs> <laughs> Metric system for life. Uh, you also shot some photos at the new 86th on Tower, the new bar that uh, we still haven't tried out Did yet. You check your ID when you went in? No, well, the, I didn't have to go in to take photos of the whole thing. I don't know if you guys have followed it. Uh-huh. found out about this. They are going to, they do have plans on expanding a little bit, but I had to ask the bartender to make sure I wasn't missing a bigger part of the building. It's, <laughs> it's rather small. No, it's, it's a 15. 15- 15 person occupancy mm-hmm. like inside and outside yeah. it's like i love the idea of 19 year old cody walking into a bar and being like where's the rest of it <laughs> i'll never <laughs> <a good> <laughs> hey. <laughs> I, think, I think the last 15 uh person occupancy i've been at was that tent that they set up at a blarney's outside when you couldn't drink inside but you ah, could drink yeah. inside outside <laughs> no the ventilation was better <laughs> that was the stupidest shit that's ever happened oh. <laughs> i will be forever madder about that part of the pandemic than anything else that i had to sit outside <laughs> in a tent in the cold to spend times with my buddy. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> my buddy. <laughs> like, you like you're required to go to the bar. Yeah, I'm and just the saying, worst part of this. 40 years pandemic. from now, when my grandkids ask what was the worst part, I'm going to be like, well, it was cold and uh, service was a bit slow because people were laid off at that time. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just going to really tell them. Papa, uh, I, heard, I heard a million people die. And you'd be like, well, the worst part... <laughs> Uh, uh, last one, I'll cut it off. There's lots more news we didn't get in, but that's fine. We had our own college protest at the Evergreen State College that mm-hmm. a contributing photographer slash writer, Otto Rabe, sent in. Um, I had Ridley, our photographer, stop by just because I'm not completely familiar with Otto and I wanted to make sure we weren't, we weren't getting conned or something. Um, and they set up a few tents, put up their demands, and there was not a soul around. <laughs> uh, you know, <laughs> it's, it just it, seemed a little lazy to me. When it breaks out, when it breaks out on the Centralia College campus, I'll be the first. You'll to let us document know. it. Yeah. yeah, you'll be the first there with a stick I'll beating be, him. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I'll be helping pitch tents, man. You'll you'll take that little uh, that little golden coin that Snaza gave you and <laughs> affix it to your, your <laughs> collar. Hey, I got I got to put it in my car. I'm like it. <laughs> It's, it's get like out of jail free card. It's like a two year coin or something. It's like a ten year for like the de- the sheriff's deputies. He just, just give them one. out like candy. Yeah. Well, uh-huh. I think I'm just gonna keep it in my car, and if like a if a cop pulls me over, it's just gonna be like a reverse card. You know, like I don't think so. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think it's gonna work like that. I don't. I don't it says Sheriff it Rob like Snaza on it. You, yeah. Try that in Thurston County. And see what happens. <laughs> try that in a big town. Well, hey. <laughs> a teaser for next week. I'll have another bros now. <laughs> I'll have another round of food inspections for next week's game. Of oh, thank God! The food Sweet. inspection lightning round. <laughs> you got to tell me who got last uh, after we're done here because I don't. You never told me. You were, we work it. here. We have piles of newspapers. You proofed them. You have access to Crownline.com. I couldn't find it. Oh my gosh! I don't know right, why. I don't know if it's just me or like whatever. I search for an article on it the is newspaper. Just you. I just it just I can't <laughs> find it. We're sponsored by Summit Funding, <laughs> Shayla's Outfitters, and The Roof Doctor. Thank you, Derek Sanders, for joining us. He was great. Leave a review and rating on Apple Podcasts if you want, or send us an email at chroniclenewsdump at gmail.com. Mm-hmm.